Well, good morning. I hate it when this happens. I tried three times to start at 444, and Movie Maker just would not. I mean, I'm pressing the record button, and nothing's happening. So I had to close, close it a third time and reopen it, and I'm starting it again with no test. And for those of you that un don't understand test, back in 2011, I had videos that I recorded and they came out as total gibberish. So I always run a sound check to make sure it's recording voice and not gibberish. <laughs> and I did no sound check on this one. Uh, I mean, I did a sound check earlier on one of the things and the sound check worked, but then when I went to record the actual video, nothing was happening. So again, it's forcing me to start videos at a time other than what I choose to start them at. And it was only, it was only at uh, 4:34 that I jumped out of bed and decided I'm going to do the video at 4:44. And of course, I started at 4:45. Anyway, good morning, hello. <laughs> uh, don't you just hate it when I do these crazy introductions like that? The topic for today, and I really wrote it quickly: healing the criminally insane. As I lay there in meditation, I found myself revisiting Ho'oponopono. This is a subject that has come up now a few times in conversations with my lady friend. Dr. Yu Lin introduced us to the idea. What if hundreds or thousands of us made a commitment to hold the cr criminally insane leaders in our hearts? I'm sorry. Please forgive me. I love you. Thank you. Can we actually heal these psychopaths? To me, that would be the ideal. <laughs> and I could have written more on the blurb, but I saw that it was um, uh, 443, and I thought I've got to quickly start this video because I, of course, wanted to do it at 444. That's grounding master energy on Earth. That's what it means to me. That's what 444 means. And if ever we needed to ground master energy on Earth, or healing energy on earth, or loving energy on earth, or compassionate energy on earth. This is the time that we need to do it. The world is at a crossroads right now. We have the opportunity to take our human experience in an entirely different direction. And many of us, myself included at times, see the only solution as arresting the criminals and getting them out of the way because we don't see how it's even possible to fix the world and get the world that works for everyone that so many of us have in our hearts, the, the kingdom that's, that's within us that cries out to be birthed through us. We don't see how we can do that as long as there's these people that, that sit at the helm, if you will, in the ivory towers and still think that they have the right to control everything and everyone and own all the resources and dominate the whole culture of humanity. How do we do this? Well, for those of you that don't know the story of Dr. Yu Lin, he's a psychologist or psychiatrist, I'm not sure which, who got the assignment in Hawaii of uh, managing, if you will, or working in a in a prison for the criminally insane. And it was so difficult a place to work. I mean, it wasn't safe for staffs. There was a constant turnover of staff because it was so dangerous, because these people were psychopathically insane, and here they are incarcerated in a prison. Unfortunately, in our world, some of the most criminally insane people sit in uh, towers of CEO space, or not CEO, I, I shouldn't say CEO space because that's an actual organization that I was part of and probably still am considered part of since I did the uh, IBI uh, week. Anyway, another subject. Um, the psychopaths are in charge of our major institutions in our world. They are bankers. They are CEOs of multinational corporations. They become the figureheads in the political establishment. And these people seem to have an agenda that is horrendously 
terrorizing the human population because their game, game plan in, involves killing off a whole majority of the human race and creating a, a smaller world that can be more easily managed by them because their whole game plan is to control everything. They are us. They are the most <laughs> diabolical, the most perverted, the most sick, the most wounded part of the human experience, of creation itself. Now, Dr. Yu Lin did not see the patients in this hospital. He, he would take their files and he would employ uh, a shamanic Hawaiian practice called Ho'oponopono. And he would say those words, looking at the file, looking at this broken human life. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. I love you. Thank you. And he would repeat this day in and day out. And I don't remember the entire story, how long it took, but over a period of time, the psychopaths, the criminally insane people in that institution were getting well and actually being able to be released into the society at large through a practice that sounds so simple. It sounds so easy, but it's not because we, in order to be able to do this, we have to overcome a major obstacle. And that major obstacle is the illusion of separation. We actually believe the lie that we've created, that we can be separate from anything or anyone. That's simply not true. It's why I rail against New Thought people and science and, and A Course in Miracles people and, and Abraham Hicks channeling messages sometime because they, they talk as if if we just can separate ourselves from negative influences and negative thoughts and negative feelings that somehow the world's going to get better. But these negative thoughts, feelings, influences, people, psychopaths are part of us. They're not separate. It's not another creation. There's only one creation and it's all held together in the same web of life, whether we like it or not, whether we admit it or not, whether we want to face it or not, it's all part of the same whole. And we have fragmented and fragmented and fragmented ourselves into smaller and smaller parts. We have fragmented our ideas into specialties so that we can only pay attention to this but not that. And we can never connect the dots and see the big picture. My friend, my lady friend sees the big picture. and. It thrills my heart that she does. She's one of the few romantic interests, probably the only romantic interest I've ever had in my life that sees what I see. And sometimes I even forget that I see it myself because it's so difficult to hold that vision of wholeness in my mind when I see so much distress and so much, so many problems in the world, when I see so many things going wrong, when I see people doing insane things to other people, when I see police trained to abuse people and they're supposed to be public servants, when I see soldiers killing, thinking that they are protecting freedom, when they are doing the exact opposite, they are invading someone else's space and fighting this war for people that are sick, well, what if we took these sick people, the, the Bushes and the Clintons and the Cheneys and the Rothschilds and the Rockefellers and the, the people that are the, the operatives and whoever the hell the Archons are or whatever the hell the, demon, the demonic influence is, what if we took these and recognized them instead of something separate from us, what if we recognize them as a broken part of our own self, a broken part of creation, that we are part of that creation and we helped create that. We helped create the circumstances where that could exist and we started taking full responsibility for what is instead of trying to deny it or avoid it or get away from it or stamp it out or kill it or make it go away, make the world go away. Well, 
We're not going to make the world go away. We live in this world. And there is no illusion about our experience. Our experience is real. Experience can only ever be real. It may not always be based on truth. It may be based on false evidence appearing real like separation. But nevertheless, the experience of whatever we experience is always real. It's not illusionary. Folks, get it through your head. The religion that has taught separation is a religion of bondage. The religion, the spiritual teachings that have taught us to try to push things away that we don't like, that is not how we're going to heal. You don't become whole by rejecting parts of the whole. You can only become whole by healing those parts that seem to be out of vibration, out of synchronicity, out of, out of order, if you will. And we need to bring them back into order. And I'm suggesting that Ho'oponopono, as simple as it sounds, as naive as it might be to a lot of people, might have something that I need to re-examine. There have been times in my life that I've really applied this, but then it drifts away. And I want to make a commitment to myself because that's really the only one that I can make a commitment to that really matters. I want to make a commitment to myself to start doing this again every day. To hold the dark forces, if you will, in my mind's eye and just open their file, so to speak, their Akashic record. Open that record and recognize that that's a broken part of me and say, I'm sorry. Please forgive me. I love you. Thank you. What if a hundred of us or a thousand of us would make the same commitment? to hold the people that are most responsible for the world's ills as we see it. Not as something that's separate, but as something that is a part of us, crying out for healing, crying out for love. You say to me, but Ron, the psychopaths have seared consciences. They don't show compassion like normal people do. They can't relate as normal people do. And I ask you, what are normal people? Are you normal? Am I normal? <laughs> I'd like to not think of myself as normal because to me normal is, is an aberration. It's not, it's not something that I gravitate toward. Normal is ignorant. Normal is judgmental. Normal is fragmented. Normal is sick. Normal is not wholeness. It's not compassion. It's not love. The norm in the world among the human family is very, a very painful norm. Suffering is normal on our planet. Should it be that way? Why is it that way? Is it that way because we believe the lie of separation? Is it that way because we refuse to love what is most difficult for us to love? in ourself first, and then in those around us, and then in those that seem to be the biggest problem of all, the psychopaths, the sociopaths, that sit at the helm of a system of slavery, a system of lies, a system that is so fraudulent that nothing is the truth. Everything is perverted and distorted. Everything is twisted all out of shape. It's a caricature a twisted caricature of what is possible, of what is latent within our souls, the love that we are, the peace that we are, the compassion that we are, the kindness that we are. Where are all these things? They are hidden beneath layers and layers of bitterness, of anger, of despair, of pain, pure, pain of just being alive and experiencing life in a matrix of lies, a matrix of violence, 
a matrix of anger and we've even forgotten what we're angry about. All we know is that we're angry because it hurts, because something deep inside of us hurts. My friend and I are committing ourselves to helping the world heal, to creating a world that does work for everyone. We're committing ourselves to bring, when we become lovers finally, and we will, when we become lovers, we're going to bring that energy into focus to heal the wounds, to recreate the world in a better image, an image of who we really are, an image of our highest potential, our greatest good. This is what we're committing, committed to do. And I wonder how many other couples are willing to commit themselves to bring your lovemaking and the energy of your passion into a healing process that touches lives all over the world. We don't have to ask permission because all we're doing is recognizing that they are us. They are part of our reality, part of our experience, and we owe it to all parts of our experience to say, I'm sorry, please forgive me. I love you, thank you. Let's do it, folks. Let's heal the sick world. Let's heal the criminally insane within us and among us. We can do it because we can envision it because we have a heart to do the right thing, to do the only thing that makes sense, and that is to love as we've never loved before. Thank you for listening, and namaste.